All right, welcome to another edition of Power Players where we talk to the most respected and influential people in their respective industries. And right now I have none other than the man, the myth, the legend. Hold on, man, hold on. My man DJ Kendall, what up DJ What's Kendall? What's up, man, how are you, how are you, how are you? All right, now for the people that don't know, tell them who you are and what you do. First of all, um, my name is Kendall. Um, people call me DJ Kendall, but one of the reasons why it's DJ Kendall is because it just so happens that I DJ, but I'm still just Kendall. So, just Kendall is, is cool. Um, I'm the music director, resident DJ at Peabody's in, in Virginia Beach, and that's really it. I mean, there's a lot more different facets to me, but um, for this, I'm DJ Kendall. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. A lot of people are really kind of influenced and shaped by their environment growing up. Oh, so, absolutely. What about your environment kind of kind of made you who you are today? Um, that's kind of a, a broad, broad question. So I'm going to try to be as as like as like straight to it. Um, people that know me know that I am. I am first and foremost one of the DJs at Peabody's in Virginia Beach. And if anybody's ever been here, we are a very, very open format type of place where we will play every type of music. And that fits into like where I'm from and like and like what I'm into. I am first and foremost a lifelong resident of Hampton Roads. I grew up in Virginia Beach, grew up in College Park. Um, went to Brandon Junior High School, gra graduated from Salem High School, you know. So gro growing up in, in that area, we had a lot of mixed type of people, you know. We had the whole gambit, you know. So gro growing up like that, you listen to all types of music. So if anybody has ever heard me mix um, music or, or, or even been around me when, whenever it comes to music, it's... I'm into everything, so I, I always try to bring that uh, across. So basically, um, my influences come from being a very, very open and broad person, uh, especially being being in this area. If like you aren't a broad-minded person, you ain't gonna survive because there are so many different types of people. You know, we have a. We have many military bases. We have many people coming in to visit. So like, I am exactly what this area is. It's like broad-minded, um, open to a lot of different things, a lot of different sounds. And um, that's that's really where my in a influence comes from uh, when like it comes to my music taste whenever I'm DJing or, or like listening to music. I'm just a very, very broad-minded person, so I listen to everything, you know, so I mix everything. <laughs> like, like, it's also like a running joke where it's like, um, any night that I'm DJing, you have an equal chance to hearing some of your most favorite songs and also hearing some shit that you I would never think you'd ever hear in a nightclub. Like, one thing that I love doing is I love some like sometimes to drop Kurt Franklin I smile like right in the middle of the freaking night and it's and it actually sometimes goes across very very well because it's like there are some people that go to church a lot and they listen to that gospel music and it's like boom it's like hey that's something I have never heard in a nightclub and people vibe to it so I'm open minded so it's that's it you know open open to everything so you talk about you had a lot of experiences so what when did you know what happened to you that said hey i have to be a dj <laughs> that's the funniest story ever um starting here at peabody i started here in 1997 
after I worked at the Abyss in 95 and 96 doing security, working in the kitchen at the Abyss. And when I came over here to Peabody's in 97, I was just a security guy. And um, running through a whole big long list of things, um, I always learned music, I taught music, I played drums, and um, the DJ here at the time, um, DJ Joe Incorporated, took me under his wing and was like, well, this is how you press buttons on the CD player. Because back then, Peabody's was a lot different in like 97, and from 97 till about 2000, where, where Peabody's did bands. Like Thursday night, we weren't busy, so we had a, a DJ because nobody would come out to see to see a band. So we had bands on Fridays and Saturdays where like but like DJ was almost the afterthought. He mainly played in between your war band sets. So he actually showed me how to um, throw in the next CD and this and that. Um, he ended up leaving um, one night. And literally, I got thrown into it, like, right then. Like, it was, like, there was no, there was no precursor to anything. It was like, hey, Kendall, you've been pressing play on some C CDs. You're the DJ. <laughs> so, like, here I am, never done it. And I'm just like, I've always loved music. So, that's where it all started. Um, that's where it started of, of, Kindle plus DJ and, and Peabody's. I've always had a love for all types of music. So over a process of time from like, I say like 99, 2000 till 2002, there was a lot of experimenting. Um, and then, then like Peabody's kind of shifted to featuring the DJs versus the band. So then I was thrust into the limelight with with like probably like one of my best friends in the whole DJing game, which is kind of funny because he actually tries to stay out of the DJ limelight, is DJ No Request, a um, guy named Billy Stokes. And basically, on Thursday nights, we used to be up on the um, stage, two dudes with CD turntables, just throwing in CDs, watching and vibing with a room full of people and and really just making it work. So really, Kindle, Kindle DJing was actually more of a, was more out of a necessity for the club that turned into an experiment that, that like turned into a learning process to where I am now. So that's that's kind of the road from Kindle the security guy to Kindle the DJ. It was a long process, um, basically of just taking everything that I that like I know about the the composition of of music beats and, and rhythm and incorporating what I know to to actually making dance mixes. So that's that's kind of how the whole process happened. It was a <laughs> I always call it a failed a, a, a experiment because I'm still learning. I'm I'm still evolving as a as a quote unquote performer. So like I'm still a work in, in progress, you know, like Somebody that I actually heard me DJ in, yeah, in 2000, and somebody that hear, hears me now will actually say, way without a doubt, it's, it is completely different, different thing. So, so like that's the story of how how DJ Kendall came to be, and it was and it was funny because um, one one of the nights when um, when like they were trying to. Um, make the commercial for our, our Z104 spot, the owner's like, hey, what's your DJ name? And, I, and I'm like, I'm sitting here trying to wrap my head around my my like name's gonna be on the radio and people, and people gonna know, like hear, hear me. So I'm like, uh, 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 DJ Kendall. <laughs> and I was, and like, because I can't be anybody but myself. Right. You know, like some some people love me for it, some people hate me for it. I really don't care. It's I'm going to be Kendall from like birth to dirt. You know, that's that's it. I can't be anything else. You know, that's the way I was raised. Just just like 
just be straightforward like live breathe die be the exact same person so nobody can ever say well that dude changed you know well if i'm changing well you never really knew me you know i'm 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 the same way every single day like i actually teach also teach drums i actually i am the drum instructor at cox high school which i taught salem's drum line for many years but now i'm i'm at cox and like one of the things that i tell the kids every single day is i am so unpredictably predictable i am going to say the same things every single day i'm going to flip out about the exact same things every single day i'm going to eat the same food every single day and it's and it's and like everybody that i've come in contact with they'll be like well that's one thing we kendall's going to be the exact same way every single day so and like that's the way that I, I mix too. And it's funny too, because many people say, oh, you have a preset mix. Anybody that's been around me close to the stage knows that every night I am walking into a room with a blank slate. I know what I try to want to do, but I'm reading that crowd, trying to go for overall feelings, and I'm mixing everything on the fly. Like, every set that I've ever done has been off of what I'm feeling from that crowd. Right. Like, I very rarely ever come in like, well, I'm gonna play this, 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 and this. But if I do do stuff like that, it's because I actually wanna create like some odd moments. Like, I'll play like a polka song. And it's, and it's funny as like that may sound, just the, just the oddity that you never hear sounds like that, it actually comes across pretty cool. So, so that's basically how, basically where Kindle came from. It actually came from a failed experiment that's actually worked well for me for like 16 years. <laughs> So you say you've been here since about 97, right? 97, 1997. So you worked off with a lot of people yes. in that time frame. Yes. So who, who would you want to work with that you haven't worked with already? Who would I want to work with that I haven't worked with? And it doesn't have to be just one. Um, well, that's, that's kind of a funny, funny question because it's like, um, what I want to work with and like see to see to see happen is I actually want to work with like say some of the hottest reggaeton artists you know because um, this area has had the hottest hip hop tracks we've had the hottest reggae acts but like I actually want to I actually want to hear some different sounds I actually want to like hear some some really really hot Latin Latin sounds because I have never been around it to like a broad extent. Like I I love to somehow find a way to work with Don o Omar or take a call take a call I believe that's how like you pronounce his name. Or somebody from that. I I can know that Daddy Yankee is way too big, but but somebody like that in like a, in an area like this where like that type of culture has never had that type of big thing, you know? Like, like you, like you, you can see Juicy J every once in a while. You can see um, T.I. every few years, you know? But you don't see that type of thing. So I'd write, I like to work with those people because I like to see that type of crowd and actually vibe with that type of crowd because I've never had a chance to actually be in a room with like say a, a, like a straight Latino crowd or like a, well, I just don't want to be as cliche as to say a straight Latino crowd, but I want to be around a crowd that has a, a, a like real love for, for like that sound and that vibe. Because I don't want to say that I want to be around a Latino crowd because that's not it. Because it's, there are more than just Latino people that like Latin music. I just want to be around people that appreciate that type of sound. You know what I'm saying? Um, and actually more, more, more than anything, that's the real high about like like being in front of a um, big crowd is actually being able to feel their energy, and I've and I I felt hip hop inner energy. I felt pop energy. Um, I've done a few um, EDM shows, so I felt some of the 
e e EDM vibe. So I so I I kind of want to do something different, you know. So and I'm guessing that right now the only thing that comes to mind is kind of a Latin-y flavory thing. So and I've never worked with like a like a soca sound, like a live band. Well, well first of all, um, when whenever it comes to music. Anytime you are around live musicians' first tracks, it, it brings it to a whole new level. That's one of the reasons why I, I, I actually really, really dig Wale whenever he's touring with like TCB right. or like CCB because Wale is good. But when you get him in front of a go go band, it, it's on a whole new level. It, it's on a whole new level. So, like, um, I've worked with the Fuzz Band at Peabody's one time, and if you hear me, Fuzz Band, we need you back at Peabody's. We need to work that out. I, I actually want to somehow find a way. Get with Dwayne. Holla at Dwayne. Yes. Dwayne, you have my number. I want to somehow figure out a way to DJ, and this is just me talking, but like me being a percussionist, I want to somehow find a way to DJ in front of the fuzz band drummers. Per, the, you hear me, fuzz band percussionists and Kendall somehow, somewhere, whether it's a small club, a big room, I wanna somehow a, incorporate my mixing with live drums that the fuzz band does. I, I'm saying that. So you heard it here first, when they collaborate, remember it's because of power players, and no, I'm just joking. But that's another edition of Power Players. I'd like to thank DJ Kendall for taking time out his busy day. Because you, <laughs> as you can oh, hear, man. it's about to crank up right now. Yes, sir. So thank you all for watching. See you soon. Yes. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Yo, what up? VA all day. This is Kendall. You're rocking with the Power Players.